right, I think we're live. So if you're joining just now, thank you so much. So we've got a live stream going on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you're able to comment, that would be awesome. So, um, and it'll, typically it'll tell me which platform you're commenting in. So it's been a while since we've done this. And... I hope this configuration is going to work for me. I hope I don't bonk my camera with my head. <laughs> Been doing that as I got it set up, so hopefully I won't do that. Okay. So it's been a while since I was working on this drawing, and I want to make sure that I've got some colors that are very similar to what I had last time when I was working on it. But mostly when I'm looking at it right now, you know, I'm thinking, okay, i got to start right now with what I've got, and I want to establish a bright pencil, like the highlight area, and a dark pencil. Even though we're on dark paper, this is on UART 600 grit dark pastel paper. Even though we're on this dark paper, I still want to have a dark pencil available. Uh, that way... Um, if I need to go in a darker direction and I want to increase like the, uh, the terminator area, that line that separates the light from the shadows, I want to increase that if I can. Uh, I just picked up this pencil. looks like, um, what's this? Van Dyke Brown might be a good one for my dark one. You know, it's not bad. I, I could probably start with that one. And this is more, I think I put some of this down right here. This is more of my middle value, so I'm probably probably not going to use that for my brightest highlights. I'll just lay it right here on the tray. I think I used ivory, if I remember correctly, uh, in the polychromos line for some of my bright highlights. And I probably will do that again. Let me look here. Yeah, that oyster, oyster with um, the Derwent light fast line, that one might be a good one for some of the brightest areas, uh, the pinnacle areas of the of the um, highlight areas. I think I'll probably use that one. Oh, sure enough. I <laughs> Hey, Ramona, did you see me hit my camera? I just bonked my camera with my head. I'll try not to do that anymore. I was afraid that would happen. Thanks for joining, Ramona. Ramona's over there on Facebook, on the live stream over on Facebook. Okay, so that one's not bad. I think I will use that, this oyster color. Uh, so at this point, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about how many layers I'm putting down at the, at the moment, and I'm not going to worry about the exact um, color right now. Hey, Gail, thanks for following here. Gail says she's a new follower over on YouTube, live stream on YouTube. So awesome, nice to have you. And Nancy, how are you? Thanks for joining. So I'm just going to start working right here in this area. There we go. That could probably be a little sharper. What I've noticed with the Derwent Lightfast line um, is when I'm, at least when I'm putting it down on some of the sanded paper, it, it um, when I compare it to the Polychromos pencil, it's not going on there quite as easily as the polychromos pencil will. Also on the dark UART sanded paper, I've noticed that I need a little more tooth. Uh, I like that 600 grit. Um, typically with the beige color of the UART sanded paper, I like the 800 grit. But I, I find that with this dark uh, version of the UART sanded paper that 
I need just a little bit more tooth on there. Okay, and the other nice thing about using um, sanded paper or any non-absorbent surface, but certainly this UART sanded paper, is I don't have to be as delicate with my tooth. I can, I can sort of use, I hate to use the word, but I can sort of use poor form um, when I'm laying down my pencil strokes. And it's not going to... Uh, create any kind of problem with destroying the tooth or making something, uh, you know, look messy or, um, you know, have a whole bunch of lines that I have to clean up later. I'm not going to deal with any of that when I'm using sanded paper uh, because the more layers I put, I can keep putting more layers down, and the more layers I put down as I approach the area where I'm going to say, okay, I'm done, I'm finished with the project. Uh, the closer I get to that stopping point, then I can start refining uh, and smoothing out the way that um, my surface is looking. Okay. Take a look here. wasn't that long ago that, maybe a year ago, I don't remember exactly, I was doing a live stream, and somebody noticed something, um, and they told me about it, uh, which I was very grateful for. I think it was uh, the neck. They said that it was, what I was drawing was longer, um, and I was so thankful that they told me about that. But I was just looking at the neck here, and I think, I think that my neck might be, um, not quite right, so I'm going to kind of check that a little bit. Um, you know, I, I don't know, Diane. Diane's asking on um, YouTube over there if I like the um, UART. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Diane's asking if I like the UART better uh, than pastel mat for portraits. And... I don't know that I would say I like it better. Um, I like it about the same, I would say. There, there's some differences, uh, obviously, with working on both of those, but um, they both have their advantages and disadvantages, I guess, when you compare the two. But I'll just put this in here somewhere. It's not... I don't have to worry about how accurate that is at the moment, but I know that neck is over there somewhere like that, and it comes out just a little bit more is what it looks like. Looks like that's a little bit too bright right in there. <clears throat> Bella says it's a little after 2 a.m. here, just joining. Oh, my word. That is early or late, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> To me, that would be early. I'd be up in the middle of the night. Thank you, Diane. Diane said, nice drawing, John, over on YouTube. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, if you've, um, if you've been drawing on traditional cotton paper or a watercolor paper with colored pencil for a while, I would really encourage you to try using... Uh, some sanded paper or pastel mat, uh, any kind of non-absorbent surface. It is a lot of fun. Okay, I need something to establish that middle value a little bit more right there with the uh, with the filtrum. Maybe this one will work. So this is Sienna, and I can test over here and see kind of how light or dark, you know, that would be. Um, and it is more of my middle value. If I put it over here inside some of the light areas that I tested, um, then I can kind of see what it may, may look like on my project. 
But this is the cool thing about using um, using a non-absorbent surface like this is I'm going to be able to be more intuitive with my drawing. I don't have to be as regimented and reserved and plan plan everything out like I do if I'm using a traditional cotton paper or watercolor paper or, or something like that. I have a little bit more leeway and there's a little bit more room for error I can guess on certain things right there on my project which goes against the grain with everything that I typically teach in a beginners uh, type of workshop or class or online course but it is a lot of fun to work in this way as well Okay. Well, we've got a lot a lot of people joining. Awesome. Thanks for joining, guys. Um let's looks like we've got several from uh over there on YouTube live. Thank you so much for uh joining. Awesome. You guys are still on your coffee, huh? I had two cups already and I am on my tea now. Which I better take a sip of this. Ooh, still hot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if I can get this this little dip right here on the filter. You know, the funny thing is, you start working in one area like that. Um, if you're not careful and you're not looking around at everything else, you can start to create something uh that's a little bit off balance or it will start to uh create a sort of a what I like to call a twisting effect of the face and I don't want that I want to remember the entire orientation of the head tilt and make sure that that I think about that the entire time coffee and two teas uh wow okay <laughs> Diane you're you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. I find myself if I don't know if you're like this, Diane, but if I have um if I have more than two coffees um nowadays, it you know, there better be something big going on or um you know, it gets to that point where you just start getting getting the jitters or something. So I I can overdo it if I go more than more than two. That's why I switch over to to tea. I'm generally someone who um, just uses um, anything that I drink is cold. I, I'm sorry, is hot, and not cold at all. Okay, I gotta watch this shadow right in here. Make sure that I'm not covering up too much of that shadow. There we go. All right. Uh, good enough for right now. Okay. Now, there was a pencil I wanted to, to try and to see what this will look like just right at the edge of where I have some highlights. So I don't have a highlight there yet, so I can come back in here. Suggest one just a little bit right in here. And obviously there's more of a highlight over here on the edge of that nose. And I'll switch over to this polychromos pencil. Yeah, and sort of a case in point here with regard to filling up the tooth kind of quickly, you know, like I was talking about. With the beige, um, even the 800 grit, it feel, feels like I've got a lot more tooth. Um, I can feel in this area right here that I'm starting to even uh, burnish right now, which um, I don't like that. What, what I can do, though, is I can press a little harder and then keep going. Uh, that does work, so kind of an odd thing but it, it does work okay so let me get a little 
a little more of this lighter pencil in here and then I want to come in, in there with this this yellowish color so what is this this is yellow ochre okay pretty accurate then okay come over here I just want a little bit of yellow ochre like surrounding the highlight if that makes sense, like on either side of where it is bright. So within this little highlight right here on this ridge of the olive, this part of the nostril over here, I would like to have a little bit of this yellow ochre um, surrounding that highlight. Uh, okay, so we're, we're going to have an area where pretty soon it will it'll start to look funny for a little while. And I'll just have to be okay with that uh, until we kind of blend some of this together. It'll look like outlines for a little bit, and that's all right. As long as I keep going, you know, should be should be fine within time. It'll work itself out. Okay, there's... I hope you can kind of see that. Maybe that's kind of hard to see, I guess. With Let me zoom back out just a little bit. Maybe you can see it a little bit better right there. Um, hopefully you can see some of these yellow areas that I'm talking about right there on the edge. Some of the edges. Not on the highlights itself, but right at the rim of some of the highlights. Um, right up in here as well, where the light starts to turn and there's no longer any light and there's shadows instead. And so there's a little bit of a yellowish tint in those areas. Okay, come back over here. There we go. All right. And if I come back in there with this sienna color, I need to sharpen it. Then what I'm able to do is I'm able to um, fill in some of that middle value. And it will smooth some of this out. Yeah, now that that's looking more the way that I want it to. Okay. So I could look at that, since I haven't drawn on this piece in so long, I'm really testing everything. I'm just kind of figuring out, will this work? You know, I guess I could go back to the live streams that I started in July, and I did one in uh, August as well with this drawing, and I could see exactly what I used. But I think it's also beneficial to just demonstrate what to do when you come back to a drawing. Now, I could spend a lot of time over here on my test sheet and kind of figure out some of my color combinations. Uh, not a bad way to go, especially if I'm using a non-forgiving surface like Stonehenge or something like that. Although you can still change quite a few things on Stonehenge, but um, not as much as you can on this UART sanded paper. So instead, I can go directly on my project, and then if I find it's not working, um, then I can just change it. And I can stop using that pencil and switch to something else. All right. So I want to build that dark value up again that I kind of lost a little bit. Right in there. And I kind of lost it over here. I tell you, when you're using dark paper, especially if you're used to using white, which I am, um, it can be quite challenging because you're kind of, you're having to think backwards a little bit. You're thinking in the opposite direction of what you're used to.
And one thing that'll help to reserve some of this tooth, since I am in some areas bumping up against some burnishing, is to go in one direction with my stroke if I want to do that to reserve some of that and keep a sharper point on my pencil. I can always spray this though and uh, a little later on and then just keep going. That's always an option as well. Okay. So this area has a brighter highlight right in here. go. Brush and pencils uh, fixative. Nick is asking if I'm spraying with that fixative. Uh, no, I didn't on this one. Um, I have used it before. I really like it. It's a good, it's a good fixative. Um, I've so most of the time what I use is the Krylon. Diane's asking um, what, spray that I, uh, what spray I do use. I use the Krylon workable fixative most of the time. Um, now, it's a, it's a great thing, though, to use, like the brush and pencil products. Um, if you're going to use powder blender and keep adding a whole bunch of, a bunch of transparent layers on top of one, one another then that's not a bad way to go is to spray fixative and then add uh, more layers as you progress through the piece. <clears throat> so Diane is asking, what do I spray with to keep going over on fi um, YouTube? Um, maybe that's that looks like a duplicate of uh, an earlier comment. But what I spray is a workable fixative, so the Krylon workable fixative, Diane, to answer your question. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right, Nick. Thanks for the comment. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more that, yeah, you, you actually build up uh, another layer. It's like creating more tooth uh, so you have a new surface to work on when you spray some fixative down, which is so nice. Yeah, the, the, problem, the problem with doing it, the only drawback really, the biggest drawback, is that you... Yeah, the biggest problem is that you can't... You cannot um, erase after you've done that, you know. So if you want to erase something uh, from some of the subsequent layers, you're not going to be able to do that. And so that's that's my word of caution with that. Just be careful with it. So, so Ramona's asking about the new paper that Brush and Pencil is coming out with. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to try that. I've not tried that yet. Uh, I've been excited about that since Aliona um, announced that at some point. I'm trying to remember when that was. Seemed like maybe summertime. I'm not sure, but it looks it looks nice. It looks very exciting. Um, I mean, what's you you know how it is? New new products, right? <laughs> we go goo goo over new products and just you know, goo ga, I guess, and just get so excited about that. Okay, let's see here. Well, thanks, Harry. Thanks for joining. Awesome. Harry over in Scotland. Okay. You know, another thing I can do, like if I'm seeing too, way too many pencil strokes over here, which I am, um, and I don't have a soft, subtle transition into this middle value, I can try 
using one of my middle value pencils for the skin tone and try to push this in here a little bit and create this very very soft transitional edge here this gradation right um, if that doesn't work then I can take one of these shapers um, generally used for pastel or for pan pastels and come in there and just smooth that out and because remember on this type of surface there's a lot of dust that gets created so there we go that's a little bit better you know I don't want to come in there and just start putting a lot of light values in there without thinking about the curve and the dimension of the form of this particular area this cheek so I want to think about that. Okay, now, to me, I I think I need yellow ochre right in there. I see more of a bright um, yellow ochre tint right in here. So I can use this yellow ochre Derwent Light Fast Pencil in that area. And then I'm seeing a lot of pink in that cheek as well, where it starts to transition over into the shadow. And I can switch over and start doing that here in a in a little while. But and and it looks like that this area right in here is uh, a bit of a cast shadow. There's still a, some cast shadow right in here from the nose, the ridge of the nose. And so I'm seeing nearly a line right in there. Um, hope you can see that. Um, that's my interpretation anyway. And if I look at that and I want to capture that, and I think that that's a valid way to depict that, then what I probably want to do is have less of the yellow ochre up, up here and more of a pink and purple color right in there. Um, so I can come through here and sort of dedicate this area right here um, with using one of my middle value pencils or a darker value and then push this back just a little bit. Just as sort of um, a reminder to myself of what I'm doing right there in that area. I don't want there to be a definite line at all. But for a while, I can allow that to happen, just for a little while, just to remind myself of what I'm doing right there in that area. Okay. See, and I've got a pencil stroke in here. Let me zoom in just a little bit. That, so you can see this easier, might help. But I've got a pencil stroke in here that is going to be hard. It can be really hard to, um, you know, soften that up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is a pretty pretty light pencil stroke right there. And I can try to get rid of that by adding more strokes on top of it. Because I don't want that to stick out like a sore thumb, right? The other thing I can do, I can use one of my lighter pencils and I can kind of surround that. I need to sharpen this one up. But I can surround that a little bit with some lighter pigment. So I'm building up that same tonal value right there, sort of on a micro scale, right? And then I'm and I'm getting picky, and I'm seeing a lot of other areas as well. Okay, but once I've done that, and I've brought it up to that same uh, tonal value, then I can come back in here with this middle value pencil and smooth that out a little bit more. Hopefully I'm seeing that accurately <laughs> when I'm looking over here at the live stream and I'm seeing what what I'm um, 
putting down over here. I, I can actually see it slightly better than what I am looking at my project with my with my eyes through these through these new glasses. These glasses, um, well, they're not they're not new. I've had them for a while, but I'm trying. I'm giving them another shot, trying them out again, just to see if I can get used to them. Um, they got these transitional bifocals and you know I've got a slight stigmatism uh, when I'm looking at uh, uh, long distances but up close you know I I just need readers and th uh, these I don't know it's just I cannot get used to them um, it's, I feel like there's only like this real narrow spot that I can look through to be able to see anything so I'm giving them another shot. I'm gonna try it again. Okay, that uh, that's looking kind of the way that I want it to look. See, and at this point, it doesn't bother me if I have some areas that, um, you know, looks like it's not. Uh, just full of pigment in that one area, and you can see sort of the texture of the surface through it. That doesn't bother me at this point. I know some people just, oh, they, it just bothers them to no end. And uh, that's okay. It's just a different way of progressing through that area. Uh, now, see, I see a little bit of a line right in here that I don't want. I do notice that line right up in here a little bit more, uh, which I'm okay with that one. This, uh, and I'm not okay with some of the way that's looking up there, but this down here, I want this uh, to be more of a soft transition into a middle value of the cheek. Even though I don't want this to be this bright all the way into this shadow, I'm still going to use my bright pencil at first and go in that direction of where the shadow is and then I'm gonna come back in the opposite direction from the shadow into uh, the highlight area with my middle value pencil uh, to push that in the other direction So I'm gonna start over here in the shadow and I'm going to lighten up my pressure of the pencil as I go into that highlight. Okay, I I think I like that a lot better. All right. This can be so much brighter than what it is right now. Again, I'm not getting a whole lot of the pigment to stick on the paper in that area. So I have to make sure I use an extremely sharp tip on the pencil. Uh, I'm okay with it not adhering just immediately and very quickly. Bella saying over on YouTube that... She got her first pair of long-distance glasses today, and it distorts her uh, perspective. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to creep in here to old age, if you want to call it that, uh, very gracefully, and um, trying to use these glasses and give them a give them a shot. <laughs> I don't know if you figure out Bella how to. Uh, how to navigate that with these with these uh, glasses? Let me know. See, I'm somebody that I I never wore glasses. Um, I never had any vision issues, you know, when I was when I was younger. And so now I'm trying to um, adjust to the idea that I need glasses. You know, I have to have glasses around. Okay, that needs to wrap around. 
See, it's exciting to me when I look at some of these areas that I know later on I can use some very bright colors and it'll look uh, very nice. It can look very, very nice. Like I can use a bright red in some of these areas and it'll look uh, very convincing when you look at where the light is and then where that light switches and transitions over into the shadow. Um, and this is kind of what we're doing right now with that yellow ochre. Uh, we're getting, you know, some of those those very warm colors in there surrounding the highlights. Diane says she's got glasses and she uses a magnifier sometimes as well uh, over on YouTube. Yeah, I I used to use a magnifier. Um, I don't really do that so much anymore, but that does help, doesn't it? Um, especially when drawing. I guess I'm talking about drawing. I'm not sure if you were, Diane, but um, I like to sometimes you be able to see some of those real tiny details, and nothing can do that any better than just some type of magnifying glass. I was wearing jewelry specs for a while, and I started noticing that I started drawing smaller and smaller when I did that. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> Time I'm done, I'm going to be, you know, going down so small, I'm going to be using, like, I don't know, artist trading card size or something. And that's not going to, not going to help too much. <laughs> I don't want all my pieces to be artist trading card size. So it sounds, sounds like, Bella, you're going to have the cataracts um, surgery. So I hope hope everything goes well with that. I've My mom actually had that done. I, I've heard people talk about how much that has helped. Okay. I'm going to use this Derwent drawing pencil, the white, Chinese white. Since I've kind of built up this spot to where I can't get anything else on it, then I can come in here with a softer pencil. And that's what the Derwent drawing is. It's a softer pencil. And it leads, leaves... Um, residue. It leaves some, because it's so soft, it just kind of leaves some of itself behind, you know, like some shards behind. And um, when I'm using it, I'm never thinking, okay, this is, this is real, real permanent, because sometimes it's not. Uh, you can go over it with a polychromos pencil or something that is a harder lead than what the Ch Chinese Derwent drawing pencil is and you're going to you're going to rub some of this light color off when you do that which is fine it's it's just part of the the properties of this particular pencil okay Uh, let's see. Well, I need to sharpen that. One. 
often on this UART paper, um, if I'm using the AFMAT long, that uh, sharpener gives you a very long point, then I'm not going to sharpen it all the way. Because if I do, then sometimes I'll break off the little tiny point off of the, the tip of it there. Um, so a way to get around that is to not leave it in that sharpener the entire time. There we go. I'm always amazed at how much time has passed when I'm drawing. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. It's like you look up and wow, 30 minutes or an hour has gone by and it feels like you just started. And it looks like we're about 40, 41 minutes in and I feel like I just turned on the live stream. Okay. Oh, yeah. Time does fly when arting. <laughs> Diane, that's funny. Okay. Let me see if I can smooth that out just a little bit here. We can smooth that out and at the same time take care of some of those issues with some of those lighter pencil strokes that I don't want. Um, they're okay, but I don't want them to become distracting. So I feel like I haven't really done a lot. Ah, Bella is saying she's getting back into art after a 20-year break over on YouTube. Well, welcome, Bella. That's so exciting. Welcome to the community. Um, there's a lot of us in that same boat. I was in that same boat about 10 or so years ago. And it's it's exciting. It's just like this brand new thing, just this whole new world opening up to you. Uh, so awesome. I'm so excited about your journey with that. It's just It's just so fun. Okay, let me put a little more value right in here. I should say that, um, and if Ramona is still on here, um, she uh, she is actually over there in the community, the um, the monthly sharpener community. And I should say that if Bella or anyone else, if you guys are wanting to join us over there, it's a free community where you can talk to other artists who are also. Um, you know, exploring this medium of colored pencil and other mediums as well, I might add. Um, we're having a lot of fun over there. And let's see here. Okay, let me see if I can. This part over here under uh, surrounding the eye, I mean, this is, this is very bright right in here. So somehow I need to lighten that up a lot more. Uh, 
That's that's uh, very cool, Bella. She's saying it's fun to find all of her old gat, uh, art gear stashed away. And she she is also um, uh, challenged by figuring out uh, the pencil pressure, I think you said. Um, if I can read this correctly. Uh, let's see here. How much pressure you had to add to your pencil stroke. Yeah, you know, that that is something that can be very challenging. And what I usually encourage newer artists to do is to do a pressure stroke um, grid, a test. And, and that's something that, you know, I walk through in the beginner's colored pencil course. But if you do that, you can figure out, you know, how much pressure... Um, you're putting down and then you know that's going to change it's going to uh, make a difference depending on what support you know you're using what kind of paper um so i i don't think you have to get way too technical about it i mean because i've seen i've seen some uh documents where somebody will an instructor will tell them like there's a four pencil pressure, an eight, and I, I mean just all these technical things related to pencil pressure, and I, I can understand why um, someone would advise that kind of thing, but at the same time, you just kind of have to figure some of that out for yourself as you're progressing through your pieces, and you know you'll get there, you'll learn how uh, to know how much pressure is. Uh, needed in a certain area but at the beginning I, I totally get that it, it can be uh, a little a little daunting and it takes it takes some practice and you'll get there okay build that up just a little bit here I need this middle value right in here because this is this is actually a big curve going on. It's, uh, you know, it, I don't want this to abruptly switch over into a dark area, right? I need there to be a gradual transition from light to dark. Okay. A little better at the moment for the time. That should work. Mm. We have to figure out. We have to readdress the scalera of the eye, the white of the eye. Figure out what colors I was using. Um, is that? And I need to look at the shape as well. That overall shape of the eye, right in there. Uh, there we go. So this portion up here in the upper eyelid does need, and this is, it does need to be um, a little more, it's not accurate right now, it needs to be a little more um, refined as far as the shape is concerned. When I'm looking at this particular uh, subject, I want to make sure that um, that there's some recognizability with the reference. And, you know, that's, that's one thing that is something that we all look at. Um, we look at the eyes, and we'll be able to tell whether it looks like the person that we're drawing or not based on some of those intervals, those distances, with with regard to um, where the crease of the upper eyelid is, uh, the distance, the intervals between uh, the edge of the upper eyelid, and then that crease, that fold, that crease up there in the upper lid, and then the distance again with where the eyebrow is. And those things matter. 
so I need more of an angle right in here. I just put a, a little line there to remind myself that I need to build that up just a little bit and pay attention to that that angle right there. Okay. If you guys have any specific questions at all, you're welcome to ask, and I'll try to answer those as we're progressing through this. Um, I do like to get, you know, some of the drawing done when I'm on a live stream, um, rather than just answer questions the whole time. But I I will try to listen for for questions. I've got this text-to-speech on the chat window, which curates it from both Facebook and YouTube at the same time, and it will um, use a computer voice to tell me exactly what you've typed into the chat. Sometimes it doesn't get everything real accurate, so I have to glance over <laughs> and make sure that you know what was said is actually what, what I think uh, was being read to me. So that's... That's what's going on there. Okay. Now I realize how funny that's going to look here in a little while with this portion over here when we compare it to this other side. Um, it'll look more yellow over here. Uh, Diane's asking, how often do you live stream? And I've, I've been sort of hit or miss... Um, I think I've done some Mondays before with live streaming, but um, I uh, started doing that a little bit more over the summer. Um, I had a uh, sort of a family emergency, a family uh, issue going on. I um, uh, had a, a relative that passed, and so I kind of got a little off schedule with some of that, but I, I'm planning to do more of those in the future, uh, more of these. And so... Uh, I'll be putting out, if you're on my email list, Diane, I I sent a, a notice out on my email list, and that's probably what I'll be doing going forward is trying to hit uh, Mondays and trying to do this on Mondays. Um, but, if yeah, if you're on the list, then the email list, I'll send out a notice uh, and let, let you all know when I'm uh, going to be doing the live stream. Okay, so I built up some of these lighter values right there in the middle of the face. I need to apply the same thing up here in the forehead, uh, the rest of the nose, um, and eyebrow area, this gabella. Bila, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, Bila. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Diane. Sounds good. You know, that that's a tough one. Gail's asking, how do you figure out, um, or I'm sorry, Ramona's asking, how do you figure out um, if a subject is appropriate, uh, a good subject matter for dark background? Um, mostly what I do is I try to ask myself, what is, what is a predominant um, you know, color or tone. And if it's not white and if it's very dark, then a colored background or a dark background, if it's a dark, um, you know, type of um, subject matter, then I'm going to use a dark background uh, because it speeds up some of your process, you know, speeds up your time just a little bit. So that's that's kind of my take on it. Um, I know some artists, though, they just use a dark background. Um, you know, they just use it on everything. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that either. So Veronica is asking, what type of pencil sharpener do you recommend? I would love a great electric one that won't tear up my pencils. Yeah, um, Veronica, the pencil sharpener that I've been using lately is called the Affmat sharpener. It's an electric sharpener, 
It's blue and black. I can hold it up here. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, that's what it looks like. And it's got a charger. Uh, it's just got this cord. And I've got it out right now only because uh, I just charged it a little bit more. But it's such a nice charger. You can It's a retractable uh, cord that plugs into a USB. You'll get such a long, nice, sharp point on your pencils. We'll keep going here just a little bit longer. If I don't, you know, um, cover some of these other areas right now, then I may forget what I've done or how I progressed to this point in the piece when I'm looking at the cheek over here, especially this cheek that I've worked a little bit longer on. And so I do want to suggest some of these tonal values in here, even if I don't refine some of these large shapes and I don't smooth out some of the areas I'm working on. I do want to just stick some of these colors in there, if you will. And I can come back to it later, you know. And again, I can overlap. You know, I can overlap some light areas into the dark areas. Uh, Diane, you're saying that the um, luminance pencils will not uh, fit into the Afmat sharpener? Um, I use it all the time for the, my luminance pencils. It has two different um, hole options. And there's more than one Afmat pencil sharpener, so I'm not sure which one you have. But um, I've not ever had a problem with it so far. It'll even take my Derwent drawing pencil, which is, I think, even a fatter barrel than my Luminance. I'm pretty sure. I want to make sure I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, yeah, I just tried. Um, I think these are larger. I may be wrong about that. One of you guys may know. Um, I think the Derwent drawing is a larger barrel in diameter than the Luminance. Maybe they're the same, but I thought they, that Derwent drawing was larger. But anyway, uh, the Afmat one, that sh pencil sharpener electric one that I'm using, um, will handle both of those. And there's two different hole settings, one for a smaller barreled pencil than the other. Yeah, you know, we're reaching nearly that point where I feel like I am going to have to spray this in order to get a little more tooth. Um, but before I do that, I would probably smooth out some of these areas. Huh. Diane, I'm, so I'm not sure. Um, there's more than one Afmat sharpener, um, so I'm not sure if you're using the one I am, but I haven't had any problems so far, but uh, who knows? Maybe they changed it. They could have done that. I don't know. For a long time, I was using the um, Derwent Super Points, a manual pencil sharpener, and then I found out about the Carl Angel 5 manual pencil sharpeners, and I love those. I still do. Um, but the Afmat pencil sharpener, I tested with it for quite a while, and it just um, it just did such a good job, and it was so fast. I, I used one, you know, one-hand operation. It was just so quick to be able to sharpen my pencil quite quickly and just get back to drawing that I just I, I couldn't help but use it. I mean, I had to use it saving me time, um, you know, and not breaking the pencils. Even on some of those manual sharpeners, I would break pencils once in a while. And I've had the Afmat sharpener break a pencil 
uh, pencil lead that is, um, you know, just very, very few times. Um, relatively few amount of times. So that that was a real big deal to me. But, you know, um, but uh, Diane is uh, saying that she was having some problems, so your your mileage may vary, I suppose. Um, and the one that I buy, there, there are more than one. Uh, there's more than one model, I should say. And the one that I have, um, I thought was around sixteen bucks. So it really wasn't breaking the bank or anything. It wasn't a real expensive sharpener. Um, but there is there is another one uh, that's sort of dark um see-through kind of it's that clear kind of plastic and it has a dark tint to the glass i guess i hope not either gail um i th i uh, she's asking um you know she has it in her wish list on amazon and she's hoping that it hasn't changed from the one i have yeah i mean i haven't heard from anyone else that it's changed but um but anyway it's a very responsive company i'll tell you that um, I emailed them about something. I don't recall what it was now. Um, and they offered to uh, send me out some free stuff and things like that. And I didn't I did not take them up on that. I um, but they were responsive and emailed me right away. I generally try not to take free things from companies because I don't want to I don't want to um, recommend something and then, uh, have to give that disclaimer that I'm sponsored or that I'm, you know, receiving free products from the company. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but when I'm listening to a review or I'm hearing someone recommend something, it does taint the veracity <laughs> of what they're saying just a little bit for me. I, I'm not saying that they're lying. They're 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 probably not, but I'm just saying it. It it is at least in their mind that they got this from the company uh, for free, and so you know. Good, Nancy's just saying over on Facebook that she just bought the this sharpener and it looks like the same as mine, so that's good. Yeah, Diane, I agree with you. Um, she just said Afmat has great customer support. Yeah, that's what I thought. They just seemed um, like they want to stand behind their product, uh, which is a big deal. Because you can go out there, I mean, I'm sure you guys know, you, you go out there, there's hundreds, right, of sharpeners. So many to choose from. Um, so it's, you know, there's no no lack of sharpeners available. There was another pencil sharpener that I had tried for a while, um, and I, I had high hopes for it. And I think it's called the Hilo or something. I've got it right here. Let's see if I can find it. Halo. It's called the Eye Point Halo by Westcott. Um, here's a picture of it. I don't know if you guys have tried that. Um, and it, it, did all, it did all right. I was kind of excited about it, actually, at first. Um, but it only has one hole, one setting there. So the larger barrels of pencils, I, I couldn't even use the larger barrel pencils. Oh, thanks, Sergio. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining us also. Uh, Sergio just made a comment over there on YouTube Live. Um, okay. Let's see here. I don't want to lose this edge on this nostril right now. I may be okay, 
losing most of that edge on that nostril later on. But at the moment, I want to keep it there for a little while. There we go. How many of you guys are at work right now? Sneaking a peek. <laughs> I just think that's funny when that happens. Um, I worked with a guy that I would walk by his desk and he'd have all kinds of things streaming on his computer all the time. He was still working, but I think it was like background noise, you know, and he'd be would be just uh, having something streaming just nearly always. Um, let's see here. And I always had a podcast going usually when I was at work. Um, you, you really didn't, it wasn't that, you know, as opposed to looking at something, um, some kind of video or something, but I, I couldn't do that. Couldn't do that and work, you know. So just having... Um, some kind of audio as background was nice. Nice, Gail. That's the way to be right there. <laughs> Gail said she's retired. That's that's it. Yep. So you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. In bed. Bela says she's in bed. Well, so... I think that's interesting. It's like you never know what people are. Sometimes people are, are uh, you know, jogging or something when they're listening to podcasts especially. But Yeah, I forgot about that. It is nighttime over there where Bela is. As slow as I talk when I'm uh, drawing, then this is a good thing to to probably do when you're in bed. Help you help you fall asleep. <laughs> so Diane says she's in between household chores. There you go. See, this appears to be brighter. Right here in this area. And that actually is the brightest areas in the entire piece, if I've judged that value correctly. And... So right here at the tip of the nose is a very, very bright area. But right over here on the cheek is as well. So I can use that Derwent. And over here as well is very bright. So I can come in here and just establish some of these bright areas right away. And... And then if I do that, when I come back to the drawing, I'll kind of know what I was doing there. So right in here, let's see, right in here. Now I'm not worried about this looking beautiful at the moment. I just want to establish that those are highlight areas and then I will refine that and smooth it out as I progress through there later on <clears throat> oh thanks Lonnie thanks for joining then Lonnie says this is um this is their first um YouTube Live, so very, very cool. Awesome. Thanks for joining. That's cool. And 
And you got the the Aftermath Sharpener. Ah, oh, very cool. Exciting, I tell you. Let's see. We've got bright areas right here as well. Okay. You guys have some kind of strategy for getting those household chores done? Like, do you mix it up with art time, that kind of thing? Like, okay, play. I, I, I like playing these mind tricks on myself. Like, okay, if I, um, if I do this particular, if I do some laundry, then I can go and I can draw some more, that kind of thing. I, I do these little mind tricks to myself sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it works though. <laughs> Yeah, I, w I want to. Uh, Beal is asking if I'm going to finish this piece in a live stream. Yeah, that's that's my goal. That's what I want to do. I'm go going to put it away until next week, and we'll come back here, and we'll do it all over again. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a fun way to do it, Diane, don't you? Um, or, you know, stacking things. saying okay if i if i want if i want to do this thing this whatever this pleasurable uh hobby is then i'll also at the same time do this other thing you know or one and then the other that kind of thing uh it's a good way to increase uh good habits as well okay Losing this highlight over here. Make sure I get that back. These lips need to be brighter over here. Mm. Oh, good, Bela. Yeah, if if you were talking to me, I'm looking forward to the live stream I think you were meaning so that's that's cool yeah so if you guys are able to meet back again next Monday that's that's my plan there we go <laughs> yeah Yeah, someone said, let's see. Bill is asking about seeing the photograph. So there we go. Um, zoom that back out just a little bit so you can see that. And I'm just putting these brights in here for right now. I think somebody asked about colors uh, a little while ago. Uh, I, looks like I lost that comment um, or someone was asking something about the colors. But yeah, I'm right now I'm just trying to establish like some of the light areas where those are the brightest areas I should say. Yeah, absolutely. Um Harry, I I guess I'm responding to Harry you were asking about um seeing the reference, so yeah, very cool. All right. This can be brighter right up here. It's kind of a kind of a tricky uh light source situation going on here. And just a, a quick word about composition and progressing through your piece. Um thinking about the way that light works, I mean, one thing that I could do, and I may do this by the time we're done, is because, uh, you know, I don't have to make all these decisions right now, but one thing I could do is I could make everything on that foreshortened side over here, um, the subject's uh, right side, uh, our left, on our left right here, I could make all of that brighter, much brighter, 
than this other side, the side that's primarily in shadow. So I'm talking about even these highlights, even the areas that I'm creating a bright highlight in. I could make those darker, and it would look fine. It wouldn't violate anything. Uh, in fact, it may add a little more dimension and curve to the overall piece. I may still decide to do that. So... Yeah, Gail saying uh, she liked it also when um, we're able to see the zoomed-in level of detail when we're uh, working up close on the piece. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Um, so I just thought I'd zoom it back out for a little while here. Can't make everyone happy, right? <laughs> um, but it is nice to look at it very, very close and look at all the details like that, but then to, uh, even, you know, even progressing through your own piece, it's nice to step back from it for a little while and look at it from a distance and be able to see what's working and what may not be working. Sometimes we get too close to our pieces. Now, see this area right in here is very, very dark. There's some dark, dark areas that I don't want to miss, so I'm going to come in here with my dark indigo and just establish some of these areas again and make sure I don't lose them. So right in here is a good one. Right there. Right over here. I want to make sure that I have a good value separation, you know, on some of this. Uh, and right over here, I mean, this needs to be pretty dark right over here by that edge of the nostril. Uh, let's see. That's already pretty dark over here by the edge of the mouth. And right in here, though, I'm interpreting that as being pretty dark right there by the chin and then underneath uh, the jawline here on the neck right by the large muscles of the neck and up here there we go um, right over here this is always something that you want to make sure that it's very dark, typically. Um, that little, little tiny corner, a little triangle right there by the edge of the earlobe. Right there. Okay. And let's see here. Gail, what I'm working on right now, so Gail's asking, being new to colored pencil work, should she work on something that is flat or uh, something that's more upright? And I'm working on something that is not flat. Um, I would suggest that you don't work on an entirely flat surface because you don't want this you know, 90 degree angle happening because the, your perspective is skewed when you're looking uh, at the furthest, you know, the longest area, uh, then your eyesight is actually skewing that angle for, for you. And you don't want that. If at all possible, uh, you want a slight angle so that your viewing angle, um, that plane of focus for for um, where you're viewing your, your project is always the same, regardless if you're looking at the bottom of your piece or the top of your piece. I hope that made sense. Okay, yeah, that's starting to look a little funny, but that's fine because that's kind of what I want. Okay. 
Yeah, you're right on. You're welcome, Gail. You're right on track there. Yeah, it definitely skews the, per the perspective. So, great question. I used to always work flat, and uh, that was that was not good. I would end up turning my project on its side and upside down and things like that. And that's not a bad thing to do anyway, but I was doing it because of the perspective issue. And when I started using a drafting table that was adjustable and I could you know, increase um, that, I could raise it up from the back, uh, then it, it helped a lot. All right. That looks better. All right. Well, if you're watching the replay, don't forget that you can speed this up as well. Probably a bad time to remind anyone of this uh, now that I'm about to to stop uh, the live stream. I think that we've worked long enough on this on the live stream, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. But I want to thank you guys for hanging out today and for coming over here. really appreciate that. Um, a lot of fun conversations, and hopefully you can join me next week as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.